Okay. <laughs> 3.2. Talking about functions today. We're going to split it up into two days. So we've got part one today. So a function is a relationship between input and output. Uh, a function is also a type of relation. It's a specific type of relation that we talked about relations the other day, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. A relation is a set of ordered pairs, right? Yes, sir. So like I said, a function is a specific type of relation, so a specific type of sets of ordered pairs. In a function, <clears throat> there is exactly one output for each input. The relation shown below is a function because each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element in the range. Okay? So, essentially, what that is saying is for a relation to be a function, none of your x values repeat. Everyone say that. No x values repeat. Everyone say that. No, everyone say it together. No x values repeat. Okay? So, over here, we've got our domain, we've got our range. None of my x values are going to two different y values, correct? Yes, sir. So this is considered a function. function. Um, so I, I like to use this analogy with it. Let's say you got a bunch of pieces of mail here. And you got some mailboxes over here. Good mailbox, huh? Those are mailboxes. Just stay with me. I'm not, a, I'm not the best artist, okay? I'm a math teacher. Come on now. So we got some letters over here, and we got mailboxes, correct? Yeah. So think of the pieces of mail as your domain, your X values. Think of the mailboxes as your range, your Y values, okay? I can have one piece of mail going to each mailbox, right? That's acceptable. Is it acceptable to have more than one piece of mail going to the same mailbox? Yeah, that's yeah. acceptable. You can get multiple pieces of mail in a day, right? Yes, sir. Right, okay. Is it acceptable for one piece of mail to go to two different mailboxes without making a copy of it, without tearing no. part of it off? No. No. So, think of that like a function, or this would be not be a function. For it to be a function, each X value, each piece of mail, has to just go to one mailbox. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So I can't have any repeating X values. Here, I would have a repeating X value because it's going to two different mailboxes. Okay? I can't have that in order for it to be a function. You can have y values repeat, but you cannot have x values repeat. Okay? Are we okay with what is considered a function and not a function? Okay. Um, this is a function as well. And I'll explain why here in a little bit. <clears throat> There's a special test we can use to tell if a graph is a function or not. Uh, but so far, are there any questions over any information I've just given you about what is a function? No, sir. What makes a relation a function? No repeating, no, no. No repeating x values, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's talk about this vertical line test. You can use the vertical line test to see if a graph represents a function. The vertical line test only works for graphs. It doesn't work for a mapping or a table of values or anything like that just if you're looking at a graph. Uh, a relation is a function if it passes the vertical line test, meaning a vertical line intersects the graph no more than once at a time. So I like to tell my students to take their pencil and make it into a vertical line. Vertical goes up and down, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you're given a graph, take your pencil. That's your vertical line that you're using for your vertical line test. Pretend this vertical line goes forever that direction and forever down. I'm going to drag it across my graph. It's ever only going to hit one point of the graph at a time. So let's say my vertical line is right here. It's 
It's only hitting one point on the graph right now. If I drag it a little further over, it's only hitting one point on my graph. Does everyone see that? Yes, sir. It's only ever going to hit one point at a time, correct? Yes, sir. No matter where I drag it on this graph. So I would say that that does pass the vertical line test, so this would be considered a function since it passes the vertical line test. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. A relation is not a function if it fails the vertical line test, meaning that a vertical line intersects the graph more than once. So this one, I'm dragging my vertical line across. Is it hitting more than one point? Yeah. yeah. It's hitting my graph here as well as here. So this would be considered not a function because it fails the vertical line test. Let's talk about why that might be the case. What would this, well, let me erase it and put it somewhere else. So here, it would be hitting the point here and here on my graph. What would this ordered pair be? Four, one. Four, one. Four comma one. Oh, right? right? What would this ordered pair be? Four, Four, five. Four comma five. I heard someone say it. Repeating x values. It's got repeating x values, right? This is why the vertical line test works. If a vertical line is hitting more than one point on that graph, that means it's at the same x value, which means I have repeating x values. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Here, it's only hitting one point at a time, meaning I do not have any repeating x values. Does everyone understand the vertical line test? Yes, sir. Vertical line test only works for graphs. Okay? We okay? Yes, sir. Can I move on? Yes, sir. No. A few more seconds, then I'm moving on. This is in your textbook. These notes will be posted to Canvas. We're good? 147? Is that correct? 147. Example 1. Identify functions. So it gives us three different set or relations. And it wants me to tell if these relations are functions or not functions. And let's go ahead and give an explanation as to why they are or not functions. Okay? So look at letter A. We got a mapping. Here's our domain. Our domain is our set of x, x values. Here's our range. Our range is our set of y values. y values. So looking at this mapping, would you say that there are or are not repeating x values? Are not. There are not repeating x values. So would you say that this is a function or not a function? Function. Function. Wait. Wait, what? Question. Ask your question. Well, how do you know if it's a function? So, essentially, a mapping is creating ordered pairs for me, right? Uh -huh. Each x value is paired with a y value. Right. So, if I need to, I can list out my ordered pairs. If this confuses you looking at a mapping like this, my first ordered pair would be negative 4, comma, negative 1. Right? Does that make sense? So, what would my next ordered pair be? Negative two, three. Next one. Two, three. Next one. Five, six. So, based on your ordered pairs listed out, do we have any repeating x values? No. I only have one of each x value. They're not repeating, so this is considered a function. Does that make sense? Any questions on the mapping? Okay. Letter B, we've got a table of values. Our domain is up top. Our domain is our set of x values. Our range is our set of y values. So once again, these are all creating ordered pairs, right? So do we have repeating x values? Yes. Yes. So would you say function or not a function? Not a function. Not a function. If it wanted me to give an explanation... I would say not a function because uh, this relation has a repeating x value of 2. On letter A, 
I would say this is a function because there are no repeating x values. Okay? Any questions on A and B? No, sir. Letter C, yes. Letter C, it just gives my relation as, a, as some ordered pairs. 2, 5, 4, 7, 8, 11, 4, 13. Do you guys see any repeating x values? Yes. yes. Which one? 4. 4. It's got a repeating x value of 4, right? Yes, sir. There's a 4 listed twice, and it has two separate y values. So I would say 4 is repeating. So would you say a function or not a function? No, not a function. Not a function because this relation has a repeating x value of 4. Okay? Are we okay identifying function not a function from a mapping table values, and a set of ordered pairs? Yes, sir. I think so. Any questions here? No, sir. Okay. Example two. Not a lovely word problem for us. Five schools are competing in the long jump portion of a track meet. The distances of the players with the best jump on each team are as follows. Team one, 20.6 feet. Team 2, 21.5 feet. Team 3, 20.9 feet. Team 4, 19.4 feet. Team 5, 20.2 feet. And it gives a visual of the actual long jump pit. Uh, this has two or three parts to it. I can't remember. But part A wants me to make a table for this situation. Okay? So what might our table look like? Huh? What might be my two sets of data points? Would it be the teams? Yeah, the team numbers. One, two, three, four, five, right? So I'm going to make that my top row. What would be my bottom row? Yeah, distances. So, what's my first team number? One. One. What was the farthest distance they jumped? 20.6. 20.6. And we'll go ahead and put feet. Two. Team two jumped how, how far? 21.5. 21.5 feet. What about team three? 20.9. 20. 20. 20. 20. Team four, 19.4 feet. And lastly, team five, 20.2 feet. Part A, done. I've created my table. Any questions how I got it? Questions on example two, part A? No, sir. Can I move on to part B and part C? No, okay. I went ahead and put the table back up here for us on this slide so we could uh, go back and look at it while we're doing part B and part C. Part B says determine the domain and range of the relation. Well, what do you think my domain is in this case? Team, 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 team number. Team so I would say the domain is what do I need in order to denote a set a little squiggly brackets right so the domain is what's my domain yeah just my team numbers correct so there's my set of x values my domain If the domain is my set of x values, the range is my set of y values. What are my y values going to be here? Yeah, the distances, right? 20 20.6, 21.5, 20.9, 19.4, 20.2. And part B is done. I've listed my domain. I've listed my range. Are we okay with that? Yes, sir. Questions on it? Yes, sir. Part C, determine whether the relation is a function. So, how do I know if the relation is a function or not? 
No repeating. No repeating. X values. X values. Are the X values in my domain or in my range? Domain. 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 So I'm looking at my domain here, or I could look at the table of values up here. Do you guys see any repeating X values? No. 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 So would you say function or not a function? Function. Function. Because there are no repeating X values, each member in my domain is paired with exactly one member in the range. Okay? Any questions on example two? Pretty easy? Hopefully pretty easy. Okay. Can I move on? I believe this is my last example here. Okay. Determine whether 6X plus 2Y equals 14 is a function and explain. Oh, we've got an equation now. Okay. Uh, we haven't really graphed equations because we could just easily draw a graph and then do our vertical line test, correct? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Anytime you have an equation with just an x in it and a y in it, so no exponents on your x's or y's, and no extra things, that's probably most likely going to be considered a linear equation. So the graph of a linear equation is going to probably be a, a line, right? So if I have any line, let's say I've got a line there, let's say I've got a line there, do you think these lines are going to pass the vertical line test? Yeah. Yeah. The vertical line is only going to hit one point at a time on these lines. The only time a line would fail the vertical line test if I had, is if I had the graph of a vertical line. That's going to fail the vertical line test miserably. Okay? But that is not the case here. I believe the graph of this equation is somewhat like this. I believe the graph is in your textbook. Does the graph look somewhat like the, what I have drawn? Yes. Okay. So, is this line going to pass the vertical line test? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, would you say this is a function or not a function? Function. Function. What would your explanation be? Can you pass the vertical? Yeah. The graph of the equation passes the... Vertical line test. I'll just put VLT. Are we okay with that? There's only going to be... Each member in the domain is only going to be paired with each one member in the domain, or the range. Okay? Questions on example three? <clears throat> you will see some similar to this on your assignment. <clears throat> so try your best on them. If you have questions on them, feel free to come see me. Okay? We're ready to move on to the assignment? Yes, sir. Let's get it. Looking for 3.2, homework number one, MH. This will be due by Tuesday of next week, but you need to be working on it in class. Are there any questions before I end the recording?